Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcad. So today I'm, I'm working with a gunsmith and what he wants to do is be able to engrave his logo on uh, tapered uh, barrels that he produces. And uh, he had some questions about the wrapping groups and what steps you need to take in order to accomplish this. So I thought I'd do a quick little video to show some of the tricks that you can use with wrapping groups when you're dealing with uh, tapered surfaces, okay? So, to begin with, <clears throat> I'm gonna grab, um, I'm gonna grab some of this, uh, some of this geometry. I already have this job set up here, but I'm gonna grab this geometry, I'm gonna copy it, and then I'm gonna paste it into a new drawing, okay? So from here, we have our barrel with our taper and then we have our logo so uh, what what do we do where do we start well a couple of things we need to do here one of the things that we need to do is we need to set up a wrapping group now in order to set up a wrapping group we need to know the diameter of the shape that we're working with uh, we also need to set up our milling job and make sure we choose a four axis machine so let, let's do that first let's set up the milling job we're gonna choose a four axis mill we're gonna run our stock wizard now in this case I'm gonna use a solid model stock because we've already turned down the barrel and we want to engrave into the barrel so we're gonna use the solid as our stock we'll select our stock model here and then we'll go ahead and choose our zero and then okay alright so we have our our milling job set up we have a four axis machine set up the next thing we want to do is set up our wrapping group now what I want to measure is the the value of this diameter the starting diameter so to do that what I'm gonna do is extract wireframe from this surface edge here okay and then once I have that wireframe I'm gonna go to measure entity and then I'm going to measure that radius and, and all the the information for that uh, that arc will come up over here so we're going to use this information when we set up our wrapping group now to set up your wrapping group you're going to go into additional functions and then add wrapping group from there we can edit the wrapping group and this is where we want to type in the diameter that we're working with we were able to measure a our radius we were able to measure our radius value here we just multiply it by two and that will give us our diameter okay so now we have our wrapping group set up for that diameter but the next step we need to do is to we want to we want to take this this logo here and we want to machine it on that taper now if we were to load a two axis engraving routine right now it would engrave it to this diameter which is the diameter of the wrapping group so we need to define this geometry on this taper okay so the way to do that it's a, it's actually really easy i mean it doesn't take much at all i uh, we're going to generate a cross section of the part here we have this cross section function w which gives us a section view we want the front section view and then from there we're going to generate the wireframe for that section view so we'll generate wireframe cancel and then we're going to turn these other things off okay so now this gives us the profile of the part we need that profile to generate a surface that's uh, along that taper okay so this this edge right here we want to generate a surface for that edge the way we do that is just doing extrude curves We'll click on this edge. Now, usually this is set to a long Z. Like at first, you'll see this going along Z. Uh, one of the nice things about this extrude curve function is you can say along normal. So that way we can have it going in the direction we need without adjusting the user coordinate system. I'm gonna make this inch and a half on both sides. So we have plenty of surface area there. No caps, we choose okay. All right, so now that's our surface. What we wanna do is take our text and we wanna project that down onto the surface. Now, if you're a Mill Pro customer, we have a, a project tool path that you can use. If you're a Mill standard customer, you're not gonna have that project. Uh, so we're gonna to need to project it ourselves. To do that, again, is really simple. We just go to other project curves to surface. From here, we'll select our text and then we'll select our surface and now we have that that tool uh, 
that text projected down onto that surface. So really, as far as the prep work that we needed to do, we're done at this point. Uh, we can get right back into the cam side of things. And in this case, we're going to use 3-axis wireframe. Okay, So the 3-axis wireframe toolpath will allow us to select the projected geometry that we created. So we're going to engrave that. And then from there, we can go through and we're going to uh, tell it the tool that we're going to use. I'm going to use an engraving tool. So I'm going to go to chamfer mill, add, I'm going to grab this one here. All right, so this is the, the tool that I'm going to use. Now when I get into the parameters, uh, this is how deep I want it to cut down into the part. Yeah, you actually have two options. You can either say cut to geometry or cut from. Cut from means where the geometry is and how deep you're going to go into the surfaces. So I'm going to set my depth here. I'm going to take it in one pass. I'm going to go ahead and compute. And at this point, you can see I've generated my tool path. And you'll see that it's slightly below that surface. And really, that's all it takes. We're done. Uh, we set up our wrapping group for our major diameter. We generated a surface for the the, the cone or the tapered area uh, of the, the barrel. We've taken our logo, we projected it down onto that surface, and then we're using three axis wireframe to take the uh, geometry we projected down and convert it into toolpath. So from here, we can run through the simulation. Now, what I'm gonna do is, um, just want to turn off that surface model there and uh, it will load up the simulation so here you can see we have our our cutter we have our tool path we have our model I'm gonna just hide the tool path and as we run through the simulation you can see how the uh, I definitely picked the wrong cutter but uh, you can see how uh, how the tool path is following our text and it's cutting along that taper. Now we could switch that out. It looks like I have a flat bottom chamfer tool loaded, but we could switch that out for a ball mill or whatever tooling was necessary. But again, that's the workflow. If you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback, please reply back to the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever thread this video may be posted in. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one, guys. Thank you so much.